In this video, we will be taking a look at how changes in interest rates impact the prices of vanilla options, specifically European calls and puts. This video will be helpful for candidates who are appearing for the FRM Part 1 exam and also candidates who are appearing for the CFA Level 1 exam. Now, when it comes to factors which impact the prices or let's say premiums of European calls and puts, in fact, there are six such factors. Number one, the price or let's say the level of the underlying asset. Number two, the strike price of the option. Number three, the option's time to expiry. Number four, the volatility of the underlying asset. Number five, the risk-free rate of interest and number six, just in case it applies any coupons or let's say dividends which are paid by the underlying asset. Okay. As far as this video is concerned, let's focus on the impact of the risk-free rate of interest. Also, let's assume that the risk-free rate of interest does not directly impact the level or the price of the underlying asset. Therefore, let's assume that our underlying asset is not really a bond, but rather it's a stock. Okay, so we'll be focusing on stock options. Let's do this. Let's begin by directly writing down our final result, our final rules of thumb that we have to remember. And these read something like this. Call option prices, these are directly related to interest rates, which tells me that if I were to plot the dependence of a European call option premium on the risk-free rate of interest, then this is how my plot looks like. As this R increases my European call option price, the premium of this option responds positively to increases in R and it goes up. Okay, Put options show an opposite behavior. Put option prices, please note, are inversely related to interest rates. So when R goes up, then the premium of a European put starts to come down. Okay, Now this is my final result, my final rule of thumb. Let's spend the remaining part of this video to rationalize this behavior that we are observing for European calls and European puts. Now, for this task at hand, actually, there are many different lines of reasoning that can be used. What we'll be doing is that we will be using the risk neutral pricing framework to explain why C and P behave the way they do with respect to changes in R. Okay. Now, what exactly is risk neutral pricing? Risk neutral pricing tells us that if we want to find the fair value of any given derivative, all we need to do is that we need to find the expected value of the payoff of this derivative in the risk neutral world and then discount this expected value to today using the risk neutral, the risk free rate of interest. Okay, so if I were to apply the risk neutral pricing framework to the case of a European call option, the fair value of my European call would turn out to be something like this. It will be equal to the expected value of the payoff of my European call in the risk neutral world times a discount factor which is calculated using the risk free rate of interest. The payoff of my European call, very simple, is the max of the S at the expiry of my call, let my expiry be capital T, so my S at the expiry is S sub T minus K comma zero. Okay? So if I were to try and find out how R and potentially increases in R impact the valuation of my European call, then first and foremost, R feeds its way into the calculation of this discount factor. That's the most obvious place where this R would feed into. As R increases, what happens? The magnitude of this discount factor decreases. 
discounting becomes heavier and this means that increase in R because of this channel would bring down the fair value of my European call and hence this channel can be written down with a tiny minus next to it. Now it's not very obvious here but please also note that R also impacts the expected payoff of my European call. How does that happen? If R increases, let's assume that R is continuously compounded, because of increase in R, expected value of this future stock price, expected value of S sub T, which is given by S, the value of the stock price as of today, times e to the power r times t, I told you r is continuously compounded, so this expected stock price it also increases. Okay, This means that the distribution of my future stock price shifts to the right. Okay, When the distribution shifts horizontally to the right, the portion of my distribution which is to the right of the strike price k becomes bigger. This means that number one the likelihood of my European call being exercised increases and number two the probability weight that I will be placing on the payoff of zero becomes smaller. Okay, So therefore in this expected payoff calculation because the probability weight assigned to this zero is dropping, the probability weight assigned to non-zero payoffs is increasing, which tells me that the expected payoff of my call option will increase when R increases. Okay, So this channel should be written down with a tiny plus next to it. Okay, so. The increase in R is feeding into the valuation of my European call via two different channels which are appearing to me to be conflicting in nature. This one is a negative channel, this one is a positive channel. Net net, please note that it is this channel which dominates over this channel and therefore the value of my European call responds positively to increases in R. Okay. Now, the same reasoning which we just now adopted for a European call can be extended and reapplied to the case of European puts. As R increases, first and foremost, this channel tells me that the magnitude of the discount factor comes down. It's a negative channel. Now, as R increases, again, the expected value of the future stock price increases. Again, the distribution of ST shifts horizontally to the right. This time, what we are more concerned about is the portion of the distribution which is to the left of the strike price K. Okay? As the distribution shifts horizontally to the right, the portion which is to the left of K becomes smaller, which tells me that the probability of exercising of my European put becomes smaller. Okay, This means that the weight that you place in this expected payoff calculation on 0 increases. The weight on 0 increases. The weight on non-zero payoffs decreases. And therefore, the expected payoff of my European put decreases when R increases. Okay, So, this channel in the case of European put is a negative channel. Okay, Here there was a conflict, 1 minus 1 plus, here both of them are pointing to a negative channel. Okay, So this tells me that when interest rates go up, the value of my European put decreases. Okay, So this video was about understanding the impact of changes in interest rates on the prices of simple vanilla options, European calls and European puts. The line of reasoning that we adopted was using the risk neutral pricing framework. If you understand how this framework works, it will not just help you in understanding how these behaviors work, but also help in understanding other areas of your derivatives curriculum as well. Okay.